You know, the previous video that we did was spot color, and even though this is the simulated process color separation section, I feel it important to show you the basics of doing real simple stuff, because a lot of times you'll have a, a complex part of an image, and then you also have type or something else. But this section is on simulated process color. I want to do uh, another image that's a little more complex. Simulated process color is where it looks like CMYK, and it has a CMYK softer feel to it. And people often ask, again, why do I do simulated process color over index color or over CMYK? Well, we know that CMYK is a little harder to control, but I'm going to give you some good tips in the CMYK section. Uh, index color uh, is made up of small, tiny pixels, and it doesn't have quite the smooth gradation where you gradate out to nothing. good example is this tiger image where you've got uh, the feather, the, the fur coming out and the fur, the fur gradating out to nothing. And with simulated process color, that's all going to be halftone dots. And you go from big dots to small dots to smaller dots, and so the dots gradate out nicely. And I happen to like it better uh, for smoother gradations. You know, one thing that Photoshop uh, Adobe did a number of years ago, I'm not sure why, used to be in older versions of Photoshop, you could actually, when you go to open a file, you could you could see a little thumbnail of the actual image, and you actually could pick the file you're looking for by looking at thumbnails. They changed that a number of years ago, and nobody knows why, and people have complained about it on the forums, and it's fallen on deaf ears. Uh, but there's a program out now that I have to, I have to look up, but I have here. It's called PSD codec preferences that's the name of the file uh, the program that you can buy now it's, it's a windows only program so for the mac guys you just need to probably search and search about how to get the thumbnails in photoshop to show up when you're trying to open files otherwise you're opening up files based on the name and a lot of times you'll have different versions and you aren't sure which file is which and if you could just see the thumbnail like i'm showing here you could just see it it would make a lot of difference this program is available from Ardfry, A-R-D-F-R-Y dot com. That's a company that sells the program for $19.95 that lets you see the Photoshop uh, uh, thumbnails of the actual files you're going to open. I find it much easier to use and it really speeds things up because I'm always having multiple versions of a file or I'm not sure what that file is. Maybe I didn't name it very well. Let's take a look at this uh, uh, tiger image. Now we're going to do a, a, a quick separation for light colored shirts. We're not going to do an underbase. That'll be in the video after this. So we're going to do another quick set of separations. Now the previous file that I used uh, did not have a transparent background. It did, but I flattened that file to give it a white background to show you how to separate it because we weren't going to make a white underbase. You really only need a transparent background if you're going to have to make an underbase because if the, if the background is, let's say the background is white and you try and make the underbase, you're going to have the, a block of white printing around the image. So a transparent background uh, is really only needed if you're going to be trying to do, do an underbase from a file that does not have a black background. Maybe they put the shirt color in it. We talked about it in earlier videos. So we know that this tiger head has a transparent background because of the checks in it. And we know that I've got my little, my workspace is kind of compressed here. I'm trying to fit all I can into one little space here so that it's big enough on the video so that you can see it. Now, if you recall from the previous video, Pulling colors was pretty simple. We have to kind of look at this and determine what our key colors are going to be because you have to use your your intuition. You know, you know that that yellow and red can be used to make an orange, uh, but you're probably better off printing an orange or maybe this orangish brown rather than using red. So you need to kind of look and see before you start separating how many colors you think you'll need because it all depends on what's sitting in that shop floor, how many colors you can print at press, how many colors you quoted the job. Uh, that all makes obviously a big difference. We know we need yellow on this. There's some colors that we can't make. We can't make yellow. Yellow is a color that we have to print. We can make this orange out of maybe a little bit of yellow and a little bit of reddish brown and that will give us maybe some of the shading. So we can actually probably pull a reddish brown or an orangish brown and get all of this because we can we know that we can probably have a little bit of black pixels falling on like the nose area here to make it darker. We know we need black, that's a given. And so the the, the tough one is the gray. Do we need the gray? If and if at all possible, and you know you'll notice from the uh, the uh, mini manual that came with this, if at all possible, print gray. Gray is a color that's hard to make out of black halftone dots. Now we do it all the time when you're trying to, when you're limited with the number of colors. If you can only print four or five colors or press, and you have a lot a lot of colors going on, then you probably can't print gray, and your job is going to be to print the gray using halftone dots on the black plate. But you know what happens at press? Things gain and they pick up on you and stuff. So we're going to go to the select pull down menu, come down the color range, and we're going to pick the black. We know we need that. I selected it, clicked on it. I'm going to click on invert. 
and we know that with this fuzziness slider we can go more or less. Now you can see what I'm doing when I go more or less. I know I'm probably going to need a little bit of black half tones on top of that nose to make that, that orange a little, give it a little some, some shape to it. And I can come back and I can go less later on. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that much to give me some black there. Again, it's a judgment call. I'm going to say OK. And we'll move this over here for right now. There's the marching ants, of course. And if we come down here and click, it is Save Selection as Channel. Click. Take off the marching ants. Control D. Command D on a Mac. Double click. Make it a spot color channel, assign it the color of black, drive off all the way off the edge, make it solidity of 100%, and say OK. There's your black channel. By the way, that would look good just on a white shirt all by itself, just black image. Click on the RGB, go to select, color range, and I'm going to select the eye. I'm going to pick the yellow. You can see it right there. Now I can pick more yellow. There is a little bit of lighter yellow kind of mixed in with the fur. And so I probably will pick a little more yellow. And uh, I can erase that later on, or I can reduce the amount. But I'm going to pick a little bit more yellow. I'm going to say OK. Save selection as channel. Now we need to assign the color to it. Now we, you saw from the previous video, we could actually go to our color that's been picked for this right there. Click on that. Click on Color Libraries. And there's the actual color that we picked, Pantone 128. There's a, a way that may or may not be easier depending on your version of Photoshop. In, in earlier versions of Photoshop, uh, pre-CC 2015, CC 2014 and earlier, we could go to this channel. We could hold down the Control key and double click, make it a spot color, click on the color picker little, little swatch, and actually sample the color right from the, from the foreground color. You can't do that in CC 2015 and on. I think it's a, I think it's a flaw in Photoshop. I think they broke it. But you, if you hear my computer clicking, but you can't do it. We have to sample from our design. I'm just going to sample the yellow. But the point is, we can then go to color libraries and it found a little bit lighter yellow, and it'll find the color for us automatically. It's really easy to actually assign the color that way. You pick the color, make the channel, control double click, sample from your design, boom, there's the Pantone color. You have to have a way to assign the color. Now, we assign the color so it previews. We need it to preview correctly on the monitor. That's the whole goal of assigning a color to it so we can see what it's going to look like. Now, what's the solidity of yellow? We made the yellow 100% in our previous exercise, and that was because it's going on a white shirt. But is yellow, and let's look at this as being ink opacities. In fact, in different windows, this is called opacity. Think of this as being plastisol ink. If you print uh, solid plastisol yellow through a 305 mesh, 120 mesh if you're an international user thinking in centimeters, 305 or 120, uh, on a black shirt, do you have yellow? No, you have a really weak color. In fact, I'm, I'm going to show you uh, samples. If you print like even scarlet red through a 305 mesh on a black shirt with no base all by itself, do you have red? No, you've got a real, real deep, very, very faint uh, maroon. If you print dark blue on a black shirt uh, without on a 305 mesh with no underbase, you can barely see it. We need to set the solidity correctly so it's going to display the way it's going to print. I'm doing this separation for a black shirt. By the way, if I make this solidity 5%, that's about the opacity of plastisol ink through a high mesh count with no base on a dark background. That's about what the opacity of the ink is. Now, if I put a base below that, or if I print this on 100% cotton, like a white shirt, I'm going to get yellow. And so the solidity gets a little confusing. I get people that get my separation and say, well, your numbers were really low in the, uh, the channel, and I changed them, and now it's real bright. This number does not change the separations. It changes how it displays on the monitor. And so you don't want to be using this monitor to, uh, number to make your saps look brighter or darker because you're not changing the actual film. You're just changing the display of it. So we're going to make the solidity 5%. Take off the marching ants, control D. I'm doing it on the shortcut on the keyboard. And let's take a look at our saps. Now, if you look at them now, you're looking at the RGB with them, and we have not made a shirt color. The reason for the shirt color really is to mask the RGB. But if I take the eyes off the RGB, there's our saps so far. Remember, if you have more than one channel on at a time, uh, you see that in color. Now, this design could use 
a brown and maybe an orange. There's this darker brown here. I could let the, the brown happen with half tones of the black on top of the orange. Let's go ahead and pull the, uh, the next color. Select color range. I'm going to pull kind of this brown. And you can see the color over here. That's the color I'm pulling. Kind of a reddish brown. And I'm probably going to go a little less on that. Again, it's a judgment call. I just want to get where it is. Kind of these shadows here. Up in the in, up in his top of his head there. And we're going to say OK. Click down here. Save selection as channel. Control double click. Click on color picker. Sample the brown. You see I got pretty close to what was there. Color library. There is Pantone match. Spot color. And what's the solidity? 5%. You have to trust me on this. As we build this and put it on a dark shirt, it'll make more, and we do an underbase and we put a black shirt as the background, it'll make a lot more sense. Say OK. Control D. We're going to select color range and I probably should pick this kind of a kind of an orange. And you can see the color in the in the foreground color. I'm just going to kind of play around, see which one I want to pick. That's probably it. Looking over here. Again, we can look. We can go less later on. We can erase. We can we can lighten things using Dodge Burn tool. Click, Control Double Click, sample it. Pretty close. Color rain or color library nearest Pantone match spot color. Now, typically with a color like this, I might go a little more opac solidity. This color is probably going to be made with a little bit of white ink. In fact, if you buy it pre-made from a supplier, it's probably going to have a little more white in it than like a red or a brown or a blue. It'll have a little more opacity on a black shirt. I want this to display the way I'm going to print it because that's the key to doing the tweaks. If you're doing tweaks and you're, it's not displaying the way it's going to print, you're doing the tweaks incorrectly or kind of flying blind. Say OK. Take off the marching ants. And now let's put the, these in the correct print order. We know that this is our yellow. So we know the yellow should probably print first. Uh, the black will print last. We can click and drag because the order is typically light to dark. So I'm going to print this color before the brown. And I'm going to make a shirt color channel now. I'm going to go to the upper little right hand uh, hash marks in the channels panel. And I'm going to come down to new spot channel. And I'm going to drag it up here. And I'm going to double click and assign it a color of white. For right now, we're going to go to color picker and white is 255 levels of RGB. We'll assign it white. Now the problem is, there's my channel. If I put the RGB on, I shouldn't see it because this channel is blocking the RGB. But the problem is, is that I have made a new channel. Here, I'm going to call it shirt. We'll call it white shirt. I made a new channel. I've assigned the color to it, but I haven't filled the channel. And until I fill the channel, the color doesn't know what to do. It's like putting rocks in a box, I, I like to say. And you have to spray the rocks white for, the, for it to show. Uh, so if I go to the Edit pull-down menu, Fill, and fill that with black, that's the rocks. I've painted the rocks white, and I need to make the solidity, obviously, 100%. So it's a black thumbnail. Don't let that fool you. Remember, it shows the thumbnail in black and white. I filled it with black, but I've assigned the color. But we won't see the color that's assigned until we turn on more than one channel, yellow. So that says that's a black channel, but that just shows you that there's a color assigned to it. Let's just see how we did here. Now, I don't like the orange. I'm going to double click on that, leave the brown. Let's see what happens if we play a little bit now, have a little fun much better. We'll change that. I don't like the fact that this little deeper darker shadow here where the black is, I'm going to click on the RGB select color range and I'm going to click on the deeper darker area. Say OK. I'm going to make that a new channel. I may or may not print that channel. Control double click. Click on that. Sample the color nearest color, Pantone match, spot color, 5%. And now take off the marching ants, control D, bring it up here, white shirt, yellow, kind of the orange, I might lighten the orange too. There's the, uh, the, the 
darker orange. There's the brown. There's the black. Now, the problem with this is looks great on its own merit, and I, I, I'm missing the gray, by the way. I know that. Uh, I purposely didn't pull as much black. I've got all that gray in the fur, and I don't have the gray on the black plate. Uh, because to make that gray in the fur, it's going to be, uh, it could get darker at press. Let's actually pull the gray now. Let's go to select color range, and let's just try and sample the gray. Let's see what we get. Gray is a funny color. I'm looking over here, it's kind of a bluish gray. That's what it thinks it is. We're going to kind of just move around here. Now, see the kind of the halo around it? That's normally from anti-aliasing, but in his case, it's that little kind of a glow because he has kind of a kind of a soft edge. We could pull more. Putting some gray in here, and there probably is some gray in there, even though we think it should be dead white. I'm just going to sample the gray. You can see where this takes some time, and usually a little playing around. Click, click. I'm just sampling to see where I think the best gray is. Uh, it's not bad. Let's try coming down a little bit. That's not enough. Let's go with the darker. That's the blue. He's a tough one. What looks so simple on the surface. Let's let's try that. It really isn't a gray. It's more of a light blue. And actually, if you look at it close, it is kind of a light blue in color. We're going to say OK. Save selection as channel. Control double click. Click on the color box. Find my color here. There we go. Color library. And what's going to be the opacity of this color? I'm thinking 15% because this will have some white in it. Think about uh, put your screen print intuition to work here and say OK. Take off the marching ants. And now let's see what we have yellow, orange, 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 brown, black, uh, gray, black. Ah, much better. So the problem is, though, we're looking at this, looks pretty good on its own merit, but we don't know what the original looks like. Uh, here's a quick tip for you, a quick trick. Now, I multi-monitor. I can't multi-monitor to do these videos, but I typically multi-monitor. Multi-monitors are easy. What's a, what's a second monitor cost you? $150. You put a second monitor right next to your computer, and you need to have your reference piece so you can actually compare to the original. Uh, so I'm going to move this as far out of the way as I can. Here's a quick tip for you, how to make your reference uh, uh, image. Now I could save this file as Tigerhead Seps and I could reopen the file and have it next to me, but there's a quicker way. If I click on the Layers panel, come down to my, my, my layer. Now I have separations going on here, I know that. And if I right mouse click, uh, by the way, this will vary depending on if it's a transparent background. The option I'm looking for is not there. A lot of times, in, I'm going to move this over so we can see the, this menu fly. A lot of times your options are different places. The options up here this time called duplicate layer. You get this window, and I don't want to duplicate the entire document. I want to duplicate and make a new document, which means I'll make a new copy with no channels. Click. Move this over here. So now I have a dupe that has no separations, and I've got my separations. So I've got my my copy, and I know it's, it's falling off the screen here because of the video. I'm going to make this a little smaller. I like to have my my reference copy nearby, so I have both my monitors side by side when I'm multi-monitoring. Now for this design, again, as like I said earlier, this is a tiger on a shirt. We could be close, but we can see that we're probably, uh, I'm going to go on this color. Let's see what he, see if happens if I lighten it a little bit. Just playing now. Let's check on, check on this color. Let's see what happens if I lighten it a little bit. Uh, getting closer. Not bad. I think that the fur could use a little bit of work. But you get the idea. That is a basic separation for a light shirt color. We're going to take the same design for the, on the next video and make an underbase and a highlight printer for this so it works on a dark shirt.